This video is about the Medicines Related Consultation Framework, or MRCF, and is particularly relevant to pharmacy professionals. Welcome to Consultations for Health helping you progress in your communication skills to optimise the care of your patients. One of the most commonly used tools to help structure a medicines related consultation is the MRCF. In this video we will break down the MRCF and look into what's involved at each stage of the consultation. The MRCF was created by a team of researchers who have validated its use in medicines and particularly pharmacy consultations. Full details of research and publications relating to the MRCF can be found in the information below this video. The framework has been developed around other medical models such as the Cambridge Calgary model. However, it has a focus on medicines and medicine related activities that will help support patients in taking their medicines and hopefully achieve good adherence. The MRCF contains five sections. Four sections are about structuring and ordering the consultation and what needs to happen when and where. The final section is about general consultation behaviours and things that we've discussed in many of the other videos in Consultations for Health. While this list of consultation behaviours can appear very much like a checklist, these will become second nature as you develop and practice your consultation skills. Most of them involve genuinely and actively listening to the patient who is in front of you and not following your own personal script or agenda. If you respond sensibly to what the patient is telling you, reacting to their needs, you will actually behave effectively and support your patient in their consultation. Basic skills such as starting with an open question and moving to closed questions will help you gather the information successfully and then using sensible language appropriate to your patient when explaining will minimise the chance of jargon. Doing these things within the time you have available will mean that you will reach a successful conclusion to your consultation. So let's start at the beginning with the introduction to a consultation. Like everything in the NHS, it's important we start with hello, my name is and what your role is. It's also appropriate to confirm who your patient is and what they'd like to be called. The second part of introducing a consultation is all to do with negotiating a shared agenda. Often in a medicines related consultation, it's the practitioner who's gone out to meet the patient or lead the consultation. So they will usually start by explaining what they've come to speak to them about and how they're going to do that. This should then be followed by finding out the patient's needs before a final agreement on actually what you're going to focus your time together on. The second part is gathering information. While it is often tempting for practitioners to jump straight in with providing information, particularly when someone's been prescribed a new medication, it is very important we find out what's going on with the patient and their view of the world to enable us to tailor the information we're going to give for the needs of our patient at that particular time. Therefore, we should start by trying to find out what the patient knows about the medicine they have been prescribed, other medicines they take, and important health and social information. This will be the essential basic background information you would need. You can then start by gathering useful information about their ability to take their new medication regularly, based on their experience of current medication. This will give you important clues to their adherence and ability to take the medication in the future. Before providing information, you then may need to summarise the key points you have established from your history taking. This enables you to agree the next stage of the consultation. It is very easy to ask questions about medication adherence in which the patient will want to please you and therefore not tell you the full truth. Therefore it's important you ask them in a non-judgmental manner, acknowledging that non-adherence is the norm rather than full adherence. 
For example, you take a lot of medication. How do you manage to take them every day? That is a much better way of asking than saying, do you ever forget to take any medicines? It's really important you try to ensure you gather all the information you're going to need before you start providing information. This means that you won't provide unnecessary or inappropriate information at the wrong point in the consultation. So the summary at the end is really essential. Once this has occurred, you can then move on to providing appropriate information for the patient's needs. To help build rapport with your patient, it's important that when you provide information, you base it on the information the patient has given you and tailor it to their own beliefs about their medicines and their condition. Using words that they've used previously and descriptions that they have used will help do this. When designing your management plan, it's important you involve the patient in every single decision. This will help them take ownership and responsibility for actions which they are going to have to take. Try to avoid always making suggestions of what they should do if they identify problems or issues. Such as, you could put a reminder on your phone or store your medicines here. Encourage the patient to first come up with these ideas and then support them to actually execute them. Throughout the process of providing information, it's important that you chunk it up into small manageable chunks of information that the patient can easily remember and digest. And you check actively that they have understood what you've told them. This may involve some teach back, getting them to say what they've taken away from the consultation, or genuine responses to questions so that you ask. If you've agreed an agenda at the start of your consultation, collected all the relevant information through your history taking and then provided the information that the patient needed, closing should be relatively simple. To close the consultation, you should agree what actions each party needs to take. This may involve referral to other healthcare professionals or following up on blood tests or repeat prescriptions. You should then do some safety netting, making it clear what actions the patient may need to take if the medicine does not go to plan, i.e. they're suffering side effects or it's not been effective. It's important you give a time frame when doing any safety netting as to when they need to take action. Lastly, you can check for any final questions and summarise the information you've given them. Through this video, we've provided a brief overview of the MRCF. This tool can help you in your medicines related consultations to ensure you provide a clear structure and go through all the essential elements that will be needed for a successful consultation. You could use the tool after you've had a consultation to help you provide some personal feedback on your performance, helping you think about whether you structured the consultation sensibly, covered all the important elements that were needed to be covered and did it in a sensible patient-centred manner. You could also ask colleagues for feedback who may be available and could actually sit in on some of your consultations with the patient's permission. For a truly accurate consideration of your consultation, with patient's consent, you could audio or video record a few consultations for training purposes and use the tool to assess how you've performed. While at the moment, it may look like a long checklist of things you need to do, with time and practice, it will become second nature and your consultations will flow and become more successful. We've covered an awful lot of consultation behaviours in this short video about the MRCF. Through the Consultations for Health YouTube channel, there are other videos that break this down and can support you in your consultations. Please get in touch if you need more help with particular aspects of consultations or you have videos that you think will be helpful to you and other people. Thank you for watching Consultations for Health. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, like our Facebook page and subscribe to these videos.